Hello, and thank you for joining me once again for Give Him 15, unless it's your first time, and then if it is, welcome. The title of our post today is Communion, Our Victory Meal. I'll be leading us in communion at the end of today's post. If possible, pause your recording and or reading and get some juice or wine ready and bread so you can join me. Communion is more than remembering and honoring. It is a declaration of, release of, and celebration of victory. I shared the following introductory paragraphs on Friday. Since all of you do not see or read every post to your shame, for clarity and context, I'm going to share them again today. On January 2nd of this year, my friend Greg Hood was given a dream which I visited often throughout the year. In this dream, the ecclesia and the kingdom of darkness were contending for America. This was pictured by a baseball world series called the World Seers Series. It was the last game of the series, the eighth inning, and we were winning by a score of 20 to 22. I and others felt that the four batters we sent to the plate in this inning represented prayer assignments for the four quarters of 2022. You remember the score was 20 to 22. For those of you who would like to see the entire dream and my comments regarding it, you could use the following links. Today, however, I want to talk about the batter or assignment for the fourth quarter of this year, which we are obviously now in. The assignment for this quarter was to remove the voice, which would be the, which would be the influence and control of Baal, the ruling principality over America. We did so by hitting the baseball into his throat with a bat taken from a box marked communion and engraved with Ephesians 1.17, a verse referencing the spirit of wisdom and revelation. In the dream, it was said to this fourth batter, if you hit the mark, it will change this game. Hit the mark, that phrase, hit the mark, is one of the definitions of the Hebrew word for intercession, paga. The symbolism is if we do and pray, paga, as Holy Spirit instructs us, we will change the game or the nation. I have known since 2007 that Baal was the strong man, as Matthew 12 references, over America. Demons and angels do not have physical bodies and therefore do not die. The same spirits that operated in ancient history are still alive and active today. Baal was a principality mentioned often in the Bible. It was frequently used by Satan to oppose Israel. His influence produced violence, blood sacrifices, and great immorality, including all forms of sexual sin. He is no doubt the spirit behind abortion, adultery, homosexuality, pornography, and the blatant attempt to defile our children with sexual perversion. The sudden next escalation of activity in our nation to promote abortion and sexual perversion, even to small children, is no doubt due to this spirit's desperate attempt to remain in control. My purpose in this post is to focus on the method God gave us in the dream, communion, with which to end Baal's control over America. 
And I'll be doing several more posts between now and the end of the year on this subject. It is beyond significant that the baseball bat used to remove Bale's voice was taken from a box stamped communion. This is all important. Spiritual forces of darkness are not defeated through human powers and weapons. They are overcome only with spiritual authority that flows from Christ and his finished work. The Lord's table, communion, pictures this. To war with communion is not warring with a ritual or tradition. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six 26 tells us, as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You proclaim his death until he comes. Today, that was the review. Today, I want to look at Genesis 14, 17 to 24. This is the first picture of communion in the Bible. This is a very significant an important passage filled with prophetic pictures of our redemption. Let's begin by reading verses 17 to 20. Then after Abram's return from the defeat of Chador Laomer and the kings who were with him, the king of Sodom went out to meet him, Abraham, at the valley of Shaveh. And Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. Now he was a priest of God Most High, or the Most High God. And he blessed Abram and said, Blessed be Abram of God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth. And blessed be God Most High, who has handed over your enemies to you. Abram gave him a tenth of everything. This is the first mention of bread and wine spoken of together in Scripture. These two items wouldn't be mentioned together again until the night before the cross, making it an obvious picture of Christ's Last Supper with his disciples. Melchizedek was a type or picture of Christ. We are represented by Abraham, our father of faith. What many do not realize is that Melchizedek was a Canaanite, a race of people under a curse. As king over a cursed people, bestowing a blessing on Abraham, Melchizedek pictures Christ having become a curse for us, Galatians 3.13, that the blessing of Abraham might come to us, verse 14. Just as Melchizedek served Abraham, Melchizedek the type of Christ, just as he served Abraham the bread and wine at the Last Supper, Christ departed from the traditional meal and served the disciples bread and wine, fulfilling this prophetic picture from Genesis 14. It is significant that the bread and wine in Genesis 14 was a celebration of victory following Abraham's defeat of evil leaders, kings, attempting to steal his family inheritance. Don't miss that. Trying to steal his family and inheritance. It was a victory meal over these kings. Could there be a more appropriate picture of the cross? where God defeated the one trying to take his family and gave us back the blessing. And just to make sure we see the symbolism 
God uses two more important phrases in this passage. For the first time in Scripture, he refers to himself as the Most High God four times. He also calls himself possessor of heaven and earth twice. Why? This was God's declaration that Satan, who had tried to effect a coup and become the Most High in heaven, had not only failed in taking over heaven, he would not become the Most High on earth either. Yahweh was declaring, though Satan thinks he has won, he has not. He couldn't take heaven, he can't have the human race, and he won't own earth. I, the most high God and possessor of heaven and earth, will redeem the earth and my family. Amazing picture. When Christ gave the disciples the bread and wine at the Last Supper, telling them these elements represented his body and blood, he was celebrating victory in advance. He knew, of course, the price he was about to pay, but he also knew he would win. And when we partake of communion, though we should remember, yes, we should remember the horrible price Jesus paid to redeem us, we must also remember that it represents the greatest victory in the history of creation. Satan was defeated, the curse was broken, and we receive the blessing of being redeemed back into the family of God. Communion pictures all of this. Christ's blood on the mercy seat of heaven is the guarantee of this victory and the, and the benefits of the new covenant. Because of his blood, we receive mercy and defeat our spiritual enemies through Christ's, Christ's shed blood America can be delivered from the curse caused by our alignment with Baal. What a promise. What a declaration. You proclaim his death until he comes. Father, get your cup ready. It doesn't have to be a fancy gobbler. I just have a coffee cup today and my bread ready. If you have to pause and you didn't do it yet, stop it. Start back up again when you get it ready. Let's celebrate communion and declare our victory together. Father, as we take the bread together in just a moment, we remember the broken body of Jesus, sacrifice for our healing and restoration. We thank you, Jesus, for becoming one of us, son of man, to bring us back into your family you bore our curse. You are our Melchizedek. You are the bread of life. And as we partake of this bread today, it reminds us that we can partake continually of your life. And so, take the bread with me now. You may want to pause, stop again, take a few minutes, pray, think, read back over this, take your time. Get your juice or wine ready. Now, Father, as we drink the juice, the wine, we honor and place our faith fully in the shed blood of Jesus for the remission of our sins. We also remember that his blood does more than cleanse us of sin. It makes us new creations in Christ Jesus. 
we are born again. We celebrate this great victory over sin and the curse. We receive health, wholeness, and salvation as we do this today. And we decree that through the blood of Christ, remember he said as often as you do this, you proclaim his death. We decree that through the blood of Christ, Satan and his forces are forever defeated. So drink the juice with me now and proclaim Christ's victory in your life over this nation. And now, Father, we ask for complete deliverance from the spirit of Baal. We ask you to remove his voice and influence from America. We thank you for this in the mighty name of Jesus. And we decree that the power Christ's redeeming blood is greater than the power of sin and death. Amen and amen. What a great word. I love these passages of scripture that give us pictures of the cross. Thank you for joining me today. Keep decreeing this all day long. Let's see this nation turn back to him. And I'll see you tomorrow.